Welcome back. So in the last video, we saw that if we want full state estimation, if we want the full state to be observable with some measurement y, then the only state, the only single measurement we can use is the cart's position x of t, okay? Because all of the other ones were um, unobservable. I only checked one of them, but you could check the observability of all of the other measurements and they're all unobservable. But this actually raises a really interesting question, which is, what if I actually don't care about the cart's exact position? But all I care about is that I can stabilize the inverted pendulum, so I can make x dot equals zero, theta equals pi, and theta dot equals zero. Okay, so I want to stabilize the inverted pendulum, but I don't care what x position the cart is in. Okay, so this is the kind of question that we have in control systems sometimes, which is the original state of the system that I wrote down. Maybe I only care about three of these variables. Okay, so maybe I care a lot more about these three variables, and I want to know, is there a subsystem in terms of just these three variables that is observable with a different measurement? Okay, so that's what I'm going to talk about here. So the basic framing is, we found that it's actually pretty hard to estimate the full state if I include the cart's position x of t, uh, essentially because it doesn't enter the dynamics anywhere, so I have to directly measure it. But if I don't care about the translational um, position of this cart, I just care that it's stabilized, maybe I can get away with just estimating x dot, theta, and theta dot, the bottom three states, okay? So that's what we're gonna look at here. So we have another script, essentially, which measurements are best if we omit x. So I'm gonna take my original four by four A matrix, my original four by one B matrix, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to build a subsystem of just the lower three by three A matrix and the lower three by one B matrix. So you'll see here, I'm essentially redefining A to just be the lower three by three block. So let me write this up, I have I have this A matrix, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to redefine A to be this bottom three by three block. And I have this B matrix, and I'm going to redefine B to be this bottom three by one matrix. Okay, that's what I'm doing uh, here in lines 33 and 34. And now we're gonna see, given this new C vector, um, and so here our C is gonna be something like, um, how do we wanna do this? So now we're completely neglecting x. So if I measure one, zero, zero here, this is measure x dot, right, x dot. And let's see if the system is observable if we measure this x dot, okay? So we're gonna run this code. So I've loaded all of these variables. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the observability matrix of A comma C, this new three by three system. And now notice that this system is full rank. It spans all of its column space. And so if I measure X dot, that is enough to infer X dot, theta, and theta dot. So that subsystem, if I don't care about X, is observable, which is really cool. Let's try this again and let's see what if I measure theta. So now this is measure uh, theta. Now I'm gonna look at OBSV A comma C. Okay, it's a little bit less obvious, um, but let's take the determinant of this and see if it is equal to zero or not. Okay, so the determinant of this is non-zero, which means that this system is also observable. So if I measure theta, the position, of the, of the pendulum, I can also infer x dot, theta, and theta dot. Okay, so this system is also um, observable. And let's just double check everything. So now let's try measuring theta dot. Okay, run that. And now I'm gonna look at OBSV A comma C. So again, my observability matrix. And let's take the determinant again. Again, since the determinant is non-zero, that means that even if I measure theta dot, the rate of change of theta, that's still enough information if I know A and B, if I know A and C, I can back out x dot theta and theta dot. 
Okay, so basically any measurement of any of these is enough to fully estimate the state of the full x dot theta theta dot vector, as long as I don't care about x of t, the cart position. So that's really cool. But remember, observability, just like controllability, is a binary uh, indicator of yes, the system is observable, or no, the system is not observable. So now what we can do is we can look at the observability Gramian. Okay, and that's going to be really interesting. So we're going to see which of these measurements gives me a better, uh, a bigger volume of the observability Gramian, and that'll tell me which one's a better measurement. Okay, so now I'm going to uncomment a little bit of code here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to build this system uh, plus du, and here d is equal to zero but MATLAB wants there to be a possibility of a feed-through term. Okay, so I have my A matrix, my B matrix. I'm just selecting the subsystem, the three by three subsystem. I'm gonna, in this case, measure theta dot. Here in line 37, I'm building my state space system. And then what's really cool is I can build the Gramian, the, the observability Gramian, just using this gram command, gram sys comma o. Okay, this is the observability Gramian. And if I compute the determinant of that observability Gramian, that essentially gives me the volume of this observable ellipsoid. Okay, and remember, the different directions in this observable ellipsoid kind of give me an indication of how easy it is to observe these variables uh, given my measurement y. In another way of thinking, it's almost like the, the bigger the observability ellipsoid, the higher signal to noise ratio um, I'm able to pull out. And so I want this determinant, which measures that ellipsoid volume, I want this determinant to be as big as possible. Okay? So I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna run this code. This is for theta dot. Okay, so let's run this code. Gram command cannot be used for models with unstable dynamics. Um, ah. I did this for the pendulum up. Let's try this for the gantry crane problem. Let's make this the pendulum down. Did everyone catch that error? It said the Gramian can't be computed for systems with unstable dynamics because essentially it's built on e to the at and e to the at blows up. So I can't get the Gramian for the pendulum up position. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the pendulum down position linearized dynamics and then the Gramian should work. Okay, so all I did was I switched this bit here, so now I'm looking at pendulum down linearization. Now, nothing changes. I'm gonna pull out the three by three subsystem because I only care about x dot theta and theta dot. Uh, I'm still gonna measure theta dot, and I'm gonna see what the volume of my observability ellipsoid is. Ah, okay, so this is the volume of my observability ellipsoid. And let's keep track of this. Let's have a little table, let's say, um, Let's say that I have um, my measurement y, and then the debt of this uh, observability Gramian. I'm going to call it um, W O. Okay. Okay. Good. So we're going to keep track of what we're measuring and what the determinant of this observability Gramian is. So I just measured uh, theta dot and the determinant was 0 0.03. Good. Okay, so now let's say instead of measuring theta dot, let's just say I measure theta. Okay, nothing changes. All I did was I just changed my C matrix here. Okay, the code ran. It actually has exactly the same uh, determinant of the observability Gramian, which I think is kind of interesting. So if I measured theta, then I would also have 0.03 volume of my observability ellipsoid. But now let's try measuring x dot. So instead of measuring theta or theta dot, I'm changing it here so I'm measuring the first uh, variable x dot. And if I run this code, you see that now my determinant of my volume of my observability ellipsoid, if I measure x dot, is 50. Okay, so it's way, way, way bigger. It's many orders of magnitude larger than if I measure theta or theta dot, okay? So I find this very interesting. What this tells me is that I have a larger 
volume of my uh, observability ellipsoid if I measure x dot than if I measure theta or theta dot. So in some sense, it's easier for me to observe my system, to estimate the full state, if I measure x dot, if y equals x dot, than if y equals theta or theta dot. Now, that's not all of the story. If I really wanted to get into this, I'd look at what are the eigenvector directions of this observability Gramian, because maybe this is just incredibly observable in one direction, and that's throwing this all off. But I doubt that. So in general, this kind of tells me that x dot might be a better measurement for my system. I get a lot of gain if I measure x dot, and I can estimate the rest of the states. Okay, so I just thought this was kind of cool. Um, you can really quickly investigate which measurements are good, which measurements are bad, what is observable, what's not observable. You can drop states if you don't need them. So here we dropped the x state uh, and just looked at the 3 by 3 subsystem. And this is all, you know, just a pr couple of lines in MATLAB, OBSV and GRAM. Okay, so next time we're actually going to design a Kalman filter and estimate the system. Thank you.